Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's good to see everyone in God's house today. Let us take this time to prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of the Lord. Thank you. 
Stand as you're able for the greeting. Rejoice, Holy Church, exalt in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let us place the resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of God's people. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Let us pray. Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty and restored all things in glory through the victory of Jesus Christ. We pray that wherever your image is still disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war, and greed, the new creation in Jesus Christ may appear in justice, love, and peace. To the glory of your name, amen. May standing for our first hymn, Christ is risen.
Yeah, there are a few here. Yes. Yeah, behind the cross. I'll wait till they all get down here, and then I will introduce my friend. Anybody guess what my friend is or who my friend is? What do you think is in here? What does this look like, first of all? It what? Okay, that's one possibility. Huh. Wow, four. Hi. Hello. Well, this, he's waking up now. This is my friend. Oh, he's been sleeping in there. This is my friend Dino. He's a young dinosaur. And, you know, when, when he grows up, oh, there's not going to be room for him in here. But this is Dino the dinosaur. Say good morning, Dino. Was that a yawn? Well, he's got a big yawn. Yeah, but this is Dino, and he's going to help me tell you about Easter this morning. Dino, look at all the new clothes. How many people here have new clothes on today? Well, I see a lot of them. Hi, yeah, you've got new clothes, don't you? Yeah, well, what about me? Well, in a way, you have new clothes. You have this egg. It's not new, I know, but well, it looks a lot better than it did before Miss Margaret cleaned it up this week. Yeah, Miss Margaret did a job on this on this egg. And uh, but you know, Easter, a lot of people have new clothes. Well, isn't this what Easter is all about, Mister Larry? Well, in a way, it is. The, oh, uh, Easter is about a lot of new things, such as, well, such as uh, the green grass. Yeah, the grass gets green and people have to start mowing their lawns around Easter time. Anymore? Well, yeah, the flowers. Look at these flowers back here. We have flowers in our yard at home. And how many people here have new flowers in their yard? Anybody? Yeah. So that's something new about Easter. Oh, well, I got one, I got one. Well, what is it? Well, uh, Easter, just a minute. I forgot. <laughs> Believe it or not, we practiced this all week. <laughs> At least I did. I never could get his attention very well. But, yeah, Easter is, um, is when a lot of things are brand new. And I guess that's the most important thing about Easter. You mean new clothes is the most important thing about Easter? Uh, well, not new clothes necessarily, but a lot of new things. You know, like I mentioned, the lawn and the flowers. But let me tell you, Dino, about the most important thing that's new about Easter. The most important thing. Okay, what's the most important new thing about Easter? The most important thing is Easter is the day that Jesus got a new life. What? Yes, Jesus got a new life. Well, his old life seemed like it was pretty good to me. Well, yes, uh, it was good in some ways. Matter of fact, it was perfect in some ways. But something terrible happened. I can't wait to hear that. Yeah, something terrible happened. Some bad people killed Jesus. And Jesus was dead for three days. Oh, that's, that's terrible. That's sad. But the good news is Jesus came back to life again after three days. That means Jesus got a new life. Yeah, that is something new. And that's what's most, that's what's most important about New things at Easter is that's the time that Jesus got a new life. And Jesus is in heaven and watches over us and takes care of us and listen to us when we pray. That's right, Dino. And I know you're a good prayer, aren't you? Well, I, I, I do my best. to do my best. Oh, I just remembered that other new thing that I was thinking about that, that you forgot. <laughs> Can you see what's new about Dino? What do you think, just looking at him, what do you think is new about Dino? Any guesses? Look, he got a new tooth. You guys see that back there? 
he got a new tooth. You ever seen a dinosaur getting a new tooth? Just wait till they're all in, buddy. You're in trouble. Uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, but I feel so good when I know that Jesus is in heaven watching over me and taking care of me. And Mr. Leary, yes, don't we have a surprise for all these kids? Surprise? Well, let's look over there where the cross is. Oh, matter of fact, I think we do have a surprise. And here comes a surprise with Miss Linda. And just reach in the basket and take one of those or the one that Miss Linda gives you. Now, make sure that you take what's in this egg, these eggs or these gifts and show them to your parents or whoever you came with before you eat any of them because I want them to check and make sure they're okay for you. I think we're going to have enough over there. Yeah, I was getting worried that we might have enough, so I asked uh, Mr. Bill, you know, to get his wallet out just in case we needed to... <laughs> I assume that these kids would take cash. and uh, <laughs> Okay, we had enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, kids, are you ready to pray with a dinosaur? Put your hands together. Dear Lord... Thank you for Easter. Thank you for all the new things. And especially the new life for Jesus. Bye bye. See ya. Bye guys. Anybody want to give a little hug when you get up? Yeah. You can, Dino likes hugs. Why don't you stand up and yeah, give him a, ooh, yeah, he's nice and soft. Hi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you guys later. raising Christ to new life, you open the path of salvation to all peoples. Send us out with the joy of Mary Magdalene to proclaim that we have seen the Lord so that all the world may celebrate with you the banquet of your peace. Amen. Amen. The scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now I will remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which you were being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of the first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, 
Last of all, to the one untimely born, who appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has been, not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of you, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, so you have come to believe. Thanks for the word. gospel. From Mark's gospel, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very, very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? 
when they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who is crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do you remember those old TV shows at the end of the spring season? They would leave you with a cliffhanger. Now, I don't know if they do that anymore because my TV watching has probably been reverted to watching it streamed and watching eight episodes in a row three years after it came out. So there's no cliffhangers for me anymore. But they used to be there, right? When things were left incomplete, a lack of resolution to what was going on. The other night, I was reminded on Good Friday, we heard the, the college chorale sing, and it started with the, the bells ringing. The Juan solo came in, and then the rest of the college chorale sang with them, and then the organ came in and just kept building, and it was beautiful and just amazing. It got to the very end, and the bells played again. And I heard the notes ring out, and I said, that's wrong. Now, it's my wife who rang the notes, and I know that it was not wrong because she does not do that. I mean, she didn't find another bell just laying around and ring the wrong one. So she was playing what was written, but it wasn't right. It was not the resolution that my mind and my brain and my ear had been trained to hear. She didn't go to tonic. It was just off. And she did it again and again and again, and it ended with that dissonance in that moment that things weren't complete and weren't right. Now on Good Friday, that's like amazing. That's exactly what it should be. You should leave not being right with what has happened. But we yearn for resolution. We yearn for things to be complete. We don't like cliffhangers in life. We like things to be wrapped up neatly and nicely. And here on Easter Sunday, when we are all gathered and it is a beautiful day and we have the front row filled with children and the brass is here and the choir is still awake for some reason and we're, we're good and we, we know that resolution is there because Christ is alive and the tomb is empty and things are good. And to mess everything up, we read Mark's gospel and it doesn't provide resolution. If we go back and we start at the beginning of Mark, we read Mark's opening verse. He says, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's Mark's thesis statement. Everything he does from that verse to the end is pointing towards that. That he is telling a story, a gospel, a good news that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he tells all the intervening tales and all the stories and all the miracles and all the ways that Jesus teaches his disciples, the ways they don't get it, the ways they do get it. He tells about the crucifixion and his baptism and goes through all of that narrative, pointing back to that moment. And then we come to this message and we come with Mary and Mary, Salome to the tomb, and Jesus is not there. There's a young man, an angel, sitting in the tomb and saying, do you not remember the first verse? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, why would he be here? He is risen. And they leave and they're 
And Mark doesn't resolve it for us. He doesn't say that they go and tell everybody. He says they don't go tell anybody because they're scared and they don't quite get it yet. They don't understand what has happened. And Mark stops the message. Now, there's other verses that have been in the past, but this is the most ancient reading of Mark, and we have this ending that is so abrupt. And they leave, and they don't quite get it. We want that resolution. The disciples, who had been following Jesus around, had expectations of, of resolution. They had expectations that Jesus was going to enter Jerusalem. He was going to overthrow the religious authorities. He was going to to pick up the sword and and kick out Rome. That there would be a new kingdom. It would be that Davidic Messiah. They had these expectations and Jesus fails to meet them in the way that they thought. We have our own expectations in life. We hope for sunny days on the weekend and all the rain to be while we're at work and stuck inside. We have expectations about good health and long life, and some of these expectations are met on a regular basis, and some are not. And here we have the disciples and this, this message with unresolved expectations. What happens? Why is this a cliffhanger? Why don't we get more from Mark? I think Mark, in his story, is the most beautiful one because it gives us the deep understanding that the story is never going to end. That there is no resolution in Mark because he knows that that message carries on and on and on. We've been gathering at this church for 130 years and we still wait expectantly for that return of Jesus Christ. We have been gathering as Christians for 2,000 years and we still wait expectantly for that return of Jesus Christ, and we come back faithfully together to be with each other as we wait that resolution. We come together today to welcome a new young man into the life of our church, that promise of expectant hope of Jesus Christ for all people. You see, Mark doesn't finish the story because there is not a finish to it. It continues on, and we know it continues on because we're here today. And that fear and fleeing and not telling anyone was not the end of the story. Just as it is not the end of our story either. That we continue to profess that Christ is alive. I think Mark leaves it untold because he is challenging us to continue that story. To continue that story each and every day. In the face of unknown. In the face of not knowing what comes next. In the face that life sometimes is a cliffhanger. Now next year we'll probably come back and we'll give resolution to this story and and read John and where he gives us these nice, wraps everything up neatly for us. But sometimes that tension of knowing that we are a part of that story, that we come together and share in the same meal that Jesus Christ was revealed to his disciples and the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the cup that people understood who Christ was for at least a moment. And we acknowledge that that mystery exists in our life. We come together now to to, to baptize an infant, professing that God's grace is with him as well. You see, this whole Christian experience is never going to be fully understood. When you have figured out baptism, and when you figured out communion, come find me, because I still am amazed by the mystery of Jesus Christ's presence with us even in the face of the unknown, even in the face of the cliffhangers of life, even in the face of death, that Christ's love prevails. So our challenge this Easter is to continue the story that Mark begins, to proclaim the good news, to leave this place knowing that maybe we are writing the next chapter. That the cliffhanger that Mark leaves us with is an opportunity for us to tell the same story to those who come next. To profess the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.
like to stand with them. <laughs> the choir is scary, I know. You may fail, follow along with the service on page 33 of your hymnal, or your responses will be on the screen before you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty act of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without Price. I present Colton Tony Blount for baptism. I present Robert James Blount, who comes to this congregation from Burke United Methodist Church. I'm going to ask some questions of the parents of Colton now. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, I do. For those of you who have gathered here, this question is for you. 
will you nurture these this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and examples he may be to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian faith, Christian life? If so, I will. And to the congregation, according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, I will. And to you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. Yeah. Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father, who come to him to judge the quick and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Amen. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you had promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John, anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sin, to clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. You ready, Colt? Come on, let's get this done. Colson Tony, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> okay, now I get to hold you. How's this going to go? Okay, ready? Gather around. You're going to put your hands on Colt, and if you, Colton, if you cannot reach him, touch the person behind you. Do we have another slide or not? <laughs> Colt Tony the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. The newest member of Otterbein's family, say hi. Are they scarier than the choir? Okay, I'm going to give you back to your mom so we can do the rest of it. You did really good. Now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. We are also glad to welcome Rob today. 
We're not going to baptize him because that happened a long time ago, and we don't do that again. And we're not going to ask him any questions about being a Methodist because he already is one. So we're just going to welcome him to Otterbine with one simple question. As a member of this congregation, Rob, will you faithfully participate in his ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? If so, I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation, the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully, participate in the ministries of the church by your pres our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Rob, welcome to Otterbine. Welcome. Thank you all.
Welcome to Otterbein. So good to see everyone here on this Easter Sunday. We know that there are people from different places that come here simply for this Sunday. It is a joy to welcome you into our church family on this day. We're happy if you come here every Sunday as well, but we love to see all the people who, who make it just for these special occasions. You are a blessing to our, our worship time, and, and we, we hope that you feel the same way about us. I get to stand at the back and get all the praise and thanks for how wonderful things are in days like this. And I kind of like that. Um, if anything went wrong today, it is my fault. If anything went right, I had very little to do with it. So the number of people who work behind the scenes to make things like this and Holy Week happen are innumerable. And I'm not going to even try to begin to, to thank them all today. But thank you to all the, the multitude of musicians and the amount of hours and time that you put into making this week work. Thank you to Sandy. Um, we could, I could spend 20 minutes saying thank you to Sandy and it would not be enough. Thank you to people who, who, are, who do all the stuff that you never see. Um, it is a, a blessing to work with such a talented congregation and a talented staff to make these days so reflective of the joy that we feel during Easter time. So thank you very much to everyone who's done all that work. There's probably some announcements that you can read in the bulletin. I trust that you're able to do that on your own. I'm not going to go through any of those. Feel free to, to ask me later if there's something that I missed that you need to be corrected. We do want to make sure we lift up to end today our, our prayers, um, several people, and we will lift them up later in the service. We want to continue to pray for Mike Ehrman and BJ Payne. Continue to keep Ann Dellinger in our prayers, as well as David Angier and Diane Gray. Diane is having surgery this week, so let's make sure we're keeping her in our prayers. Um, pray for Michelle Van Pelt, as well as Chuck and Nancy Macklin. Susan Young and Dot Schwartz, we want to remember Teresa Vickers as well, and David Morgan. We also want to remember on this, this special day, this Easter, where we celebrate the resurrection, those who have attained that resurrection now, we want to remember the family of, of George Painter. We will, we will have his service later today. We, we are... are um, George was a, a devoted and dedicated servant to this church for a very, very long time. So we miss George uh, immensely, and we want to remember his family today in our prayers. We also want to remember the family of Mary Ellen Warhol. Uh, Mary Ellen hasn't been here with us for quite some time, but she also was a long-term dedicated member. She took the most immaculate notes as a secretary for the Ministry of Council for years, and she was a blessing to this church. And Mary Ellen passed away um, this weekend, so we want to keep her family in our prayers as well. There will be a service at some point for her, and we will keep you informed of that. So let us remember all of this as we go to the Lord in prayer in a few minutes. This time we give our attention to the service of table, which can be found on page 12 of your hymnal or on the screen before you. When we get to the great Thanksgiving, we will be singing that, so remember that when we come to that part of the service. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have not done your will. We have not done against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Here's the good news. Christ died for us while yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As a forgiven and reconciled people, we are we are able to say grace and peace to each other. We can do that with more than a wave if you want to. So if you would like to shake your neighbor's hand, I think that would be appropriate today. Let us pass the peace.
to proclaim the message that Christ is risen, to proclaim the gospel message to all we encounter. Help these small gifts of what we've been given to continue to do that work. This we pray in your son's holy name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You show no partiality for everyone who fears you and does what is right is acceptable to you. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. You anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed. Those in power put him to death, but you raised him on the third day. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, recovering a sight to the blind, to announce that a time had come when you would set your people free. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the meal was over, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, drink. This is the blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. For all who believe in him receive forgiveness of sins. 
By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Now, now let us pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ, which is broken for you. Thanks be to God. And the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. Amen. This is not the table of Otterbein or even the United Methodist Church. This is the table of Jesus Christ, our resurrected and risen Lord and Savior. And as such, all are welcome to commune with us today. You may come for intention, or you may partake of the elements in your pew. Those who are assisting with me.
Let us pray for the needs of the church and the world to God, who raised Jesus to new life. Almighty God, as we come together today, we give you thanks for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, that made all things possible. Victory over death seems such a marvelous thing as we pray for the health and healing of those in our care. Lord, we pray for that now. We pray for those that we have named before you today. We pray for those who remain upon our hearts. We pray for you whose cares are unknown to us. Lord, we ask some small glimpse of your resurrection be made known to all of those today. Allow your healing presence to be with them. Lord, we give you thanks for those who provide that care each and every day. Those who've committed their lives to it. Those who for a season care for loved ones. We ask that you be with them. That you give them your strength. That you give them your foresight and wisdom to be a caregiver for others. Almighty God, we rest assured in your eternal salvation. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the victory over death. We thank you for your son, Jesus. Allow us to move into this Easter season with that joyous revelation upon our hearts so that all that we might do might reflect the love of your son to others. Almighty God, as we come together today, we, we also acknowledge that even in the midst of Easter, that there is a need for peace. Peace that transcends the everyday troubles and turmoils of life. Peace in places where there is conflict. Peace within our own hearts. Lord, we pray that the peace that we find on this morning, in this space, go with us, goes into the world, that we might all see the peace of your Son, Jesus Christ. Eternal God. We give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Let us go forth proclaiming the peace of Christ. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
go forth knowing that God has conquered death through the obedience of his son, Jesus Christ. Allow this to be the impetus to continue telling the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Receive now this benediction. Now to the one who is able to keep you from falling, to make you stand without blemish in the presence of God's glory with rejoicing, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.